Bitten by a radioactive spider in the subway, Brooklyn teenager Miles Morales suddenly discovers mysterious powers that transform him into the one and only Spider-Man. When he meets Peter Parker, he soon realizes that there are many others who share his special talents. Miles must now use his newfound skills to battle the evil Kingpin, a hulking madman who can open portals to other dimensions and pull different versions of Spider-Man into our own world. Now no movie is perfect and this one is no different, so let's discuss some of the pros and cons of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Some pros, Miles Morales. Everyone and their mother knows the story of Peter Parker as Spider-Man. But not everyone knows the story of Miles Morales. Though he may be a fan favorite character, he is still a new character to the average moviegoer. And thankfully, his character is incredibly earnest and engaging. His story is a relatable one. A kind-hearted yet somewhat rebellious kid is suddenly thrown into responsibilities that he didn't ask for. He suddenly has these amazing talents and this great power, and we all know what comes with great power. Thankfully, the movie takes the time to show Miles learning how to handle his spider powers instead of simply montaging through that time frame in his life. This allows the audience to connect with him as Miles Morales first, and as Spider-Man second. I will admit that he seems to find his stride a little too fast during the film's finale, but that's neither here nor there. The Mentor Figures I wouldn't say that Miles is a terribly conflicted character in this movie, but he is a character who is in need of some guidance. He's a youthful kid. He's unsure of who he wants to be when he grows up, which puts a lot of pressure on him, especially since everyone he knows has their own expectations for what he should be or with what he should do. So naturally, there are certain people that Miles looks up to for guidance. His father, his uncle, and Spider-Man. And I absolutely love the connection that he shares with each and every one of these characters. Their influence on Miles isn't black and white. There are shades of gray found in every one of their respective life lessons. In some aspects, every one of these mentor figures learned something about themselves through Miles. That's fantastic character development, and these relationships solidify the heart found in this movie. Peter Parker I know I just said that we all know the story of Peter Parker, but we've never quite seen him like this before. He is an older version of Parker who has clearly passed his prime, which makes him a bit more cynical and jaded than how we're used to seeing him. But that cynical nature doesn't make him any less Spider-Man. He isn't the dopey goofball that I expected him to be. He can still kick ass and have fun. He just knows what to expect during these villainous plots now. I think this allows older audience members to connect with Parker because we've all seen superhero movies and we all know what to expect from these plots as well. So that jaded nature does come across as a fun and fresh twist on the Peter Parker character since we're used to seeing him as a young, naive, and energetic person. It's almost as if this version of Parker has grown up with us as we ourselves have become more cynical. Which makes it all the more cathartic when watching Peter pass the torch of Spider-Man to Miles Morales. We've had our Spider-Man story be told about a thousand times already. It's time for a new generation to have their own original Spider-Man story. And speaking of originality, the animation in Spider-Verse is unlike anything I've ever seen before. It's simply beautiful. I know some people are turned off by the aesthetic and how the animation looks like it lags by a few frames or the faux 3D look that the studio is going for, but I think it looks outstanding. The unique style feels like a comic book come to life. I know Sony is trying to patent this specific look, but I hope that doesn't pan out in their favor. I don't want a studio to own a specific look. Artists should be free to create as they so desire. Sony just happened to be the first ones to explore this unique art style. But I think that uniqueness has a lot to do with Lord and Miller. I know that the duo didn't direct this film, but their fingerprints are all over this movie. Spider-Verse is filled with the same sense of fresh, fun, and improvisational humor that is found in both 21 Jump Street and the Lego Movie. I love Lord and Miller's style, along with their sense of humor, so I very thoroughly enjoyed this movie. 
I know this specific style isn't suited for Star Wars, but I just can't help but wonder about how a Lord and Miller Star Wars production could have looked like. The Spider People there are lots of spider people in this movie, most of which are pretty fucking obscure to the average moviegoer. Yet the filmmakers still manage to tell a cohesive narrative that perfectly balance all of their characters. Granted, Penny Parker or Peter Porker don't nearly get as much screen time as Miles Morales, but their characters are utilized for just the right amount. Their brief moments in the film really pop and make the film feel unique. I don't think Sony was intentionally trying to start an animated Spider-Man universe, but this film just knocked it out of the park and opened up an unlimited amount of opportunities for Sony to explore. I would love to eventually see an animated film that focused on the Clone Saga, or the Spider Wars, or to just see Ben Reilly or the Spider-Man armored character be featured in one of these films. Or imagine if Tobey Maguire or Andrew Garfield ever got the chance to cameo their versions of Spider-Man. It just goes to show how focusing on making one good movie will have the audience asking for more. The voice cast. I'd be remiss if I talked about the spider people without mentioning the voice cast who brought them to life. I like Shameik Moore's take on Miles Morales, but I think he's outshined by his castmates. Jake Johnson is perfect as the older Peter Parker. He basically just sounds like Jake Johnson, but it works for the cynical Peter Parker. Haley Steinfeld does a solid job as Spider-Gwen, and though everyone is talking about John Mulaney as Spider-Ham, deservedly so because he does an excellent job as a Looney Tunes character, I was much more impressed with Nicolas Cage's interpretation of Spider-Man Noir. Nick Cage had some of the funniest lines in the entire movie, and his character had me cracking up the loudest. It was also nice to hear Spider-Man cameos from Chris Pine and Oscar Isaac. Mahershala Ali, Brian Tyree Henry, and Zoe Kravitz also do fine work as well. But to move into some cons, I was disappointed with Lily Tomlin's take on Aunt May. There's one scene involving May's character that nearly had me in tears. It's such a special moment being shared between Aunt May and Peter, yet the emotion of the scene is completely undercut by May's characterization. She is unlike any version of May that we have ever seen before, seemingly unmoved by the fact that her nephew is a superhero. I just wish her character was fleshed out a tiny bit further, just so the emotional scene that I'm talking about could have had a stronger impact. Because as she is now, she feels less like Aunt May and more like Madam Web. I'm actually surprised we didn't get to see a version of Madam Web in this movie. Maybe in a potential sequel. And finally, the villains. Prowler is easily the most engaging villain in this movie, but he doesn't get enough screen time to become properly developed. The main villain is Kingpin, and his motivations in the movie are passable at best. For what he's trying to accomplish, I just don't see why his first idea was to create a super collider. At least Scorpion and the Green Goblin looked pretty cool. So I know everyone online is screaming that this is the best Spider-Man film ever made, but I'm just personally not on that train. Spider-Man 2 is still one of the best superhero films ever made. Homecoming includes my favorite interpretation of Peter Parker, and Spider-Man still holds a special place in my heart. So though Spider-Verse may currently rank 4th place as my favorite Spider-Man film, it is still a damn good movie, and maybe even one of the best films of the year. As I would probably give Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, Four out of five stars. When Sony first rebooted Spider-Man back in 2012, I was certain that another reboot was inevitable and that audiences everywhere would be introduced to Ultimate Spider-Man in no time. And while Spider-Verse doesn't exactly adhere to everything in the Ultimate storyline, I think I came pretty close in my prediction with this interpretation of the Ultimate Miles Morales character. Maybe in this new animated multiverse, we can finally see a proper version of Spider-Man and Venom fighting on the big screen together. The man can dream. Thanks for watching.